Is it just me or is the to-do list getting pretty long again? <laughs> I haven't had a huge amount of orders this week, so I find myself doing a fair bit of deadheading. Obviously the best cut flower patch is one where you're selling so many flowers that you don't need to do this job. Hello, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Suzanne and I garden and grow cut flowers in Devon in the UK. Just managing to keep one batch of sweet peas going. I've let the other ones go to seed now and there's no coming back from that. Today I'm going to be autumn sowing some of my hardy annuals, not all of them, because I've got some on order. Now, now usually I sieve uh, my compost, but actually I'm using Merlecourt Silvergrow um, for my autumn sowing, and it's got quite a fine texture. So I'm going to give it a go without sieving it um, and see how we get on. Um, when I've been using the um, compost that I've been getting from B&Q, there was a lot of wastage when I was sieving that. Um, but I, I mean, I wasn't wasting it, I was using it then as a mulch in the garden. Um, but obviously, these peat-free compost are getting very expensive now. Um, so you want to really have it all being usable. You don't really want to be using any of it as mulch. So in the UK, we call it autumn sowing our hardy annuals but I guess for those of you in the US I'm um, fall sowing cool flowers. <laughs> now if you're thinking of autumn sowing some of your annual seeds this year it's a good idea to work out roughly what zone you're in. Um, in the US I think that's a bit easier um, because you have some really good maps of your hardiness zones and that basically is giving you an idea of what your lowest temperatures are likely to be over the winter. Um, here in the UK there are maps but you can find maps that might tell you your one zone on one map and a another one on, on a different one. So it's just a good idea to have an idea of what your lowest temperature has ever been and obviously years vary and we had one really cold year here where I lost all my hebes but it doesn't get that cold ordinarily. Um, but anyway, I'm roughly the equivalent to a zone 8B. Uh, and that means I'm a very lucky autumn sower grower. Because if you read your seed packets, it will tell you what they're hardy to. Um, and just check that they are hardy down to the zone that you're in. And as I say, for, for 8B, um, we've got so many hardy annuals we can choose from. Um, too many to grow them all, although, as you know, I always have a pretty good go at trying to grow them all. <laughs> but um, if you're in a small space like me, um, sometimes you do have to choose the ones you really like. So I'm going to be doing a mix of sowing. I'm going to do some direct seed sowing, and that's going to be things like my nigella, um, some the pleurum seed that I've got on order um, and probably things like cornflowers will all be direct sown and I will only direct sow things that are hardy annuals um, but then there are some things that I like to get a bit of a head start on that are half hardy for example snapdragons, antirhinum, those I won't put outside I will probably keep them in cell trays in the greenhouse over the winter. Now my greenhouse is unheated, so I do still 
go out of an evening and cover those half hardy annuals that will still get frosted through the greenhouse glass. So this year I've got additional indoor growing space because obviously I've got the polytunnel so I'm very excited to see what I can overwinter in there. Um, and that's on top of my two low tunnels, one which I cover with a polyphene, so it is like a mini polytunnel, and the other I cover with an EnviroMesh. But some things I am just going to plant out and see how they get on, but I will keep spares of them in trays um, just to cover myself if they don't make it. And of course, if your autumn sown annuals don't make it, it's not the end of the world because you can, of course, try it all over again in the spring. The idea of autumn sowing some of them is just to give yourself a bit of a head start and just have flowers ever so slightly earlier in the spring. We've had some really stormy weather and unfortunately a lot of my dahlias have collapsed despite being fairly well cordoned. Um, and it's one of those things now at this time of year, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. I've just had to order some more elastic bands as well because I ran out for drying things and we're getting now the weather is about to turn you want to get everything well you me i need to get everything cut for drying pretty quickly now because there's suddenly going to be a lot more moisture in the air and it will be much harder to dry things um, i'm going to pop around the garden this evening um, and cut a whole, lawn, whole 
a whole load more back. Um, and I'm getting to the point now where lots of my beds are honestly ready for clearing. My season's supposed to run until the end of September, but this year I've got some um, later orders to do in October as well. But I think I'm just gonna keep a few limited things going for that um, because a lot of the things I've got growing look very, very tired and I just can't see the flowers being of good enough quality to sell. I think that's one of the things when I started growing cut flowers that was the hardest. It's almost a test. Are you a gardener or are you a cut flower grower? Because can you cut your beds back and start them again even when there's flowers in them? Can now, but it's still hard. You see pretty flowers and you're like, oh, you've got to go, I've got to get the next thing in. Do you find that difficult to? I am going to get to some direct sowing and um, I'd like to have got that done this weekend, but it's not going to happen. I realise now we're quite late in the day and that's definitely not happening. So hopefully we'll get that done next week or the following week. And that is going to be things like the Pleurum, Nigella, cornflowers. And so I'm really hoping next spring to have an array of uh, flowers to cut um, and choose from. Um, because I've been trying to improve it every year, year on year, and it is improving, but there's still a long way to go. And are you growing tulips? Let me know in the comments. I haven't ordered any. Hmm, what do you think? Is it worth it? They're quite expensive. Are they going to get tulip fire? They had, 
I'm running out of beds now where I can put tulips, where I haven't had tulips before and they haven't had tulip fire. But let me know, I'd love to know if you're growing them and which ones you're growing. Are you just gonna go for um, some, you know, fairly inexpensive um, tulips or are you forking out and buying the really beautiful doubles? Let me know, because I, I'm undecided. And what do you think I should do? Should I plant tulips or not? Should I order any? I'll probably be getting near the budget tulips soon. All the best ones will have gone anyway. <laughs> you bought them. <laughs> Can you believe that it's nearly September? I don't want to wish August away, but we've only got a week of August left and then we really are into September. If you did like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Um, if you're, you haven't already subscribed and you think you'd like to carry on following my gardening and cut flower journey, then please do subscribe. And if you'd like to contribute towards the making of these videos, then you can buy me a coffee and the link for coffee buying is in the description for the video. Please let me know in the comments if you started your autumn sowing yet, if you're going to be doing similar to me, um, some leaving and trays in the greenhouse, some direct sowing. And have, are you one of these lucky people like I am now that's got a polytunnel? What are you going to put in your polytunnel for early spring flowers? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.